One of my intentions with this channel from the beginning was to take a complete look at the Shining games on the Sega consoles. The Shining games, particularly the Shining Forces, are some of my all-time favorite games, and now I'm ready to start the deep dive into the series. I've already taken a look at Shining Force CD, so now let's take a look at Shining Force. While Nintendo's Fire Emblem series continues to thrive today, as is evident from the army of characters in Smash, for a little while, Sega had Shining Force. The Shining Force games are tactical turn-based RPGs, also known as strategy RPGs. The thing that separates them from your typical JRPG is that the combat is grid-based, and you've got to take into account your positioning, the terrain, where the enemies are, and what their range is. Because of this, the battles are much more involved than just mashing the A button to get through random encounters. This, the option to explore towns, and the sheer number of secrets to find is what makes Shining Force so enjoyable for me. That and the lack of a permadeath feature makes it much more forgiving than other tactical RPGs. Each battle is planned out by the developers. While there are certainly random elements to the game, there aren't any random encounters, and every battle has a purpose and brings the narrative forward. Now since each battle is scripted, and there are so many units at play, they tend to last for a long time. It's common for battles to take anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour. While this may be a turn off for some, I found it to be incredibly satisfying. It made it so that each time I picked up the game, I would typically play one battle and save my game. It creates perfect little play sessions that keep you coming back for more. And if you find that a battle is taking too long, or your mom calls you down for dinner or something, you can always suspend the game mid-battle and come back to it later, which is very much appreciated. Your team, known as the Shining Force, consists of 12 members including the mandatory main character Max, or whatever you choose to name him, but aside from that, you can make your team in any way that you see fit. Throughout the story, you acquire a small army of characters that join the Force, far more than you can have on the battlefield at once, and it's completely up to you to choose who you want to take to fight alongside you. There's mages, healers, paladins, archers, and swordsmen, but not every character is strictly limited to their class tropes. For example, my favorite character is Arthur. He starts off as a centaur knight, and a pretty average one at best. His health is really low and his attacks are average, but if you work with him and level him up, he eventually starts learning magic. The most exciting part about Shining Force is finding and recruiting all the amazing characters. Every single character in Shining Force is memorable in some way or another. The sheer diversity of characters is just astounding. There's centaurs, dwarves, birds knights, whatever Domingo is, an armadillo in steam powered armor, and that's just scratching the surface. The amount of characters that just simply don't exist in any other games, let alone fantasy games, is incredible, and that's Shining Force's greatest feature. Shining Force has the feeling of a passion project through and through. I love all the little touches throughout the game, like the fact that every bookcase tells you what books are on the shelf, or how when you go to your headquarters during the fight on the ship, instead of being a castle like it always is, it's changed to be below deck on the ship, and all the characters are complaining about being seasick. It's such a cute little addition and it makes me smile. The developers didn't have to do that stuff, they just wanted to. Now as far as the story goes, the kingdom of Guardiana is under attack from the evil kingdom of Runefaust. A man named Dark Soul is threatening to summon Dark Dragon from his slumber to take control of the entire world. You take control of a small band of heroes called the Shining Force, and set out to stop Dark Soul and save the world. It starts off as a pretty typical fantasy RPG story, but the further you go, the more differences start to arise between Shining Force and other typical fantasy games. As you can probably tell by some of the characters, there are a lot of original ideas here. Two of the most well-known battles are probably the circus fight, and the battle with the lasers, both of which are two of my favorites. And Shining Force never gets boring. The cities and towns give you a nice break from the turn-based combat and give you places to explore. There's so many cool things to find and almost always new members to recruit as long as you can find them. Now some towns and RPGs can be overwhelmingly large and talking to every single NPC can be a daunting task, but that's never the case in Shining Force. All of the towns are perfectly sized for exploration and there's never too many NPCs. For me they fall into that perfect Goldilocks size for a nice reprieve after battle. 
Now, one thing I really didn't like at first was the way that promotions work. To me, the word promotion is an objectively good thing. Like, when you're promoted at work, you usually get paid more and are in a more powerful position. But in Shining Force, a promotion means that your stats all go down at first. Sure, you get them back and they become even better, but if you promote half of your team at once, you're putting yourself at a serious disadvantage. What really upset me specifically was that Ken had a huge HP pool before promotion, and afterwards he was weak as heck. After a few battles it didn't matter so much, but it threw me for a curveball, especially since I didn't remember this happening the last time I played, nor when I played Shining Force CD. It's not really a big issue, but definitely don't promote your whole Shining Force at once, because you may really screw yourself over for the next battle. So far I've been treating Shining Force as a standalone game, similar to how one would have seen it when it first came out, but the truth of the matter is, there's a lot of Shining Force games on Sega consoles. Now I don't want to get into the comparisons too heavily in this video, as I plan on making videos specifically for that purpose in the future, so I'll just say that I think the first Shining Force is a great entry for the series, and if you think it's a series that you may want to get into, starting here is definitely your best option. Despite its age, Shining Force on the Genesis or Mega Drive holds up quite well to today's standards, and is also really easily available. It's available on the Genesis and Mega Drive minis, as well as the original hardware obviously, the Sega Genesis collection for Switch, Xbox, PS4, and Steam. It's also free on iOS and Android, like you have no excuse to not play this game. There's a remake for the GBA, but I can't comment on it quite yet. I fully intend on playing it in the future, and from what I've heard, it's a really solid entry. It seems like it's got some updates, so if you're really into replaying games, I would suggest playing the Genesis version first, and then playing the Game Boy versions later. The next game on my Shining Force hit list is Shining Force Final Conflict, a Japanese Game Gear exclusive that supposedly ties the stories between Shining Force and Shining Force 2, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, I'm Boffner and I'll see you all next time!